Hi, and welcome to Best in Tesla. So Tesla just held their earnings call, and we did get a few new records, but also some low numbers, as expected, because of shutdown of production lines for the upgraded Model 3 and Y line in Shanghai. And the ramp of the Cybertruck production is, of course, also not free. And we also got a date for the delivery event for the Cybertruck as well. But despite all of that, and the high interest rate, and the shaky global economy, Tesla still added about three billion dollars to the bank account but tesla's cost reduction is also just very impressive so let's check out some of the highlights of the earnings report and let's dive right in So, Tesla's operating margins were 7.6%, and yes, that is low compared to where Tesla has been before. But just remember, GM's operating margins are still just below this, even though this is the lowest Tesla has been for a long time. And someone like Ford's operating margin is actually negative. So even though many will paint this as a negative, remember this is still some of the best in the industry. And even with all the talks about price cuts, Tesla's automotive cross margin is still 18.7%, still industry leading. Remember, someone like GM has never in their 100 year history had this high a cross margin on their vehicles. During the past 13 years, the highest cross margin of General Motors was 14.08% and the lowest was 8.86%. So, as always, it's very good to have a little context to Tesla's numbers because some will be screaming about Tesla's quad margins is down. And yes, down to level that is still higher than what GM has ever been capable of doing. So this is just still very, very good. But some of Tesla's other businesses are also booming and is outpacing the vehicle growth and also with better margins. And that is Tesla's energy side of the business. Tesla's energy deployment grew 90% year over year as Tesla deployed 4 gigawatt hours of battery storage. So this is a new record for Tesla. So if this continues, we should see about 18 gigawatt hours being deployed in 2023. In 2022, Tesla deployed 6.5 gigawatt hours. So Tesla will almost triple its energy deployment in just one year, thanks to Tesla's Megapack factory in Lathrop that is still far from fully rammed, so much more to gain here. And the margins on the energy side of the business is now 24.4%, so that is not bad, as this will likely increase as Lathrop is still ramping up, and is now higher than their car business, resulting in Tesla's energy side of the business actually adding some real value to the bottom line, with half a billion dollars in profit, with service and others included. So that is about 12% of Tesla's total profits and will rise quickly with Lathrop still ramping up and the new Megapack factory being built in China. So nice to see some real growth to this side of Tesla's business as well. But this little chart also got some updates, now showing the Cybertruck pilot production should have a production capacity of 125,000 units. But as Elon said, it will probably be at least a year before Cybertruck production gets to profitability and that kind of production units. As everything about this truck is brand new, nothing is copied from others like everyone else, so it will be very difficult to ramp this production up but they will do it. But he is still very excited about the Cybertruck getting out to customers, and as expected, we did get the delivery date, and that is the 30th of November. So mark that date in your calendar, as this will be a historic moment in time. The age of the Cybertruck begins in T-6 weeks. Legacy automakers are not ready for this to hit the roads. But we also saw Shanghai's production capacity is now 
over 950,000 units. So that is nice to see they finally made that public as we have known that was the case for quite some time. And the Tesla Model Y is above 250,000 units in Texas and the Berlin above 375 units. And as they said at the earnings call that one of the new factories, so I'm guessing the Berlin factory here of course, as this is the one with the biggest volume, but they said that it was getting close to Fremont in volume and cost. So that's pretty amazing. The Berlin is of course the factory that has nothing else on their mind but ramping up the Model Y for now. A lot of things is going on around the factory. We're building the battery factory and expansion and so on, but nothing is hurting its production ramp inside the Berlin factory. So they are of course having a big advantage compared to Texas, where they are also focusing on the Cybertruck and battery production. But for Berlin to already be close to the volume and cost as Fremont is just so impressive. But of course Tesla showed on the chart here that the Berlin is not at Fremont's level in production capacity, but maybe Fremont was also a bit down in Q3 as they might be doing some upgrades there as well. So that could be why they are saying that the Berlin comes close to the volume of Fremont. But if cost is already close to Fremont, that is really a great testimony to Berlin's efficiency. But anyway, now Tesla's combined production capacity is 2.35 million. So everything is still ramping up nicely. But Elon also talked about in the earnings call that monthly payment is still what matters. And as I showed in last week, the monthly payment is basically the same as in 2019. And Elon did mention this as well. That is what matters. With the high interest rate, Tesla has been forced to drop their prices if they wanted to keep their addressable market at the same size. Because even though Tesla has made a lot of price cut this year, Tesla's addressable market has basically not changed as the monthly payment is still the same as four years ago because of the high interest rate. But as we can see, unlike pretty much anyone else, Tesla can make these price cuts because they earn so much money on every single vehicle they sell. So that is why we are saying the price cuts comes from a place of strength. They can actually afford to do it and still put $3 billion in the bank in a quarter. Because sure, Ford has also just made some price cut of their F-150 Lightning, but they are already losing something like thirty to $50,000 on every EV they sell. So they are actually not in any kind of position to make these price cuts. This just means that the Ford Model E business is just losing even more money. Tesla is not losing money. They just added $3 billion to their bank account. So Ford is not making their price cut from a position of strength, but from a very weak position. And Elon also mentioned that Tesla is testing out some advertising. But with the high interest rates, it does not make a lot of sense right now, as Elon said, informing people about a car that they cannot afford doesn't help. Exactly. Just as I said in my last week's new show, the main problem to solve is to make the cars more affordable. But Tesla also showed us just how good they are at cutting costs, as this chart shows. From Q4 of last year before the price cut, Tesla's Cox was just about $39,500. But in Q3 of this year, they have a Cox of $37,500. So in just 12 months, Tesla has reduced the cost of producing a car for them by about $2,000. So yes, Tesla has dropped the average selling price by 17% from Q3 of last year, but the cost of producing a vehicle has also gone down about 6.5%. So the price reduction that Tesla has done over the last year is really not much more than 10% to try to balance out the increasing inflation rate we are seeing right now, something that is completely out of Tesla's hands. So Tesla is just balancing its operations to make sure they can keep the volume of sale as high as possible so Tesla can keep the production as high as possible, all without losing money. 
which they didn't. They actually added another three billion dollars to the bank. So now Tesla's war chest has 26.1 billion dollars. And to put all of that great cost reduction into a little context, Volkswagen has also talked about the huge cost reduction they have to do. But Volkswagen is actually having some trouble doing this and seems to be behind schedule for its cost reduction it said it would do. So this is not an easy task, but Tesla is really executing on this one as well. But we did hear for the first time in Tesla's history that they are not just pedal to the metal. As Elon said, they are waiting to see where the global economy is going before they start full tilt on the Giga Mexico factory. So that sounds like a smart thing to do as we really don't know where things might be heading. So before we start building the biggest car factory in the world, we might just want to make sure the world's economy is not going down the toilet. And the concerns about the global economy did very clearly come through the earnings call. So even though everything Tesla does looks very strong, Tesla has no control over the global economy. And if this gets worse, it could hurt the sales of all automakers, of course, but also Tesla that only has cars with a price tax of $40,000 and upwards. So this could really hurt Tesla if the situation gets worse. And Elon clearly has some big scars from 2008-2009 when Tesla was saved in the last hour on the last day of the year. And Elon was apologizing for him being a bit more paranoid than he should. But Elon does not want to get in the situation like that again with Tesla, so they are trading a little more carefully to not rock the boat. But as we saw, Tesla has 26 billion dollars in the bank so even with a whole year of no sales whatsoever Tesla will still be able to come out on the other side still with money in the bank so I am not as worried as Elon and Tesla sounds like but then again I am not the one running this billion dollar company through this crazy storm we are in right now but I know this quarter is going to be painted as bad by Wall Street and the mainstream media, but I actually think this was a very good quarter, taking everything into calculation. With the very high interest rate, the planned shutdown of some of the production line to upgrade the Model 3 and Model Y in Shanghai, I personally think Tesla has really controlled their economy like a true master through these tough times. With continuous positive cash flow, industry leading margins and adding more money to their bank account. I am very impressed with the work Tesla has done here. And I just want to send a huge congratulations to everyone in the Tesla team for getting Tesla so beautifully through this tough time. And still having the best selling car in the world despite it having a much higher sticker price than the number two and three on that list. And let's just end with James' great chart here with Tesla's revenue through the years. As we can see, Tesla's year-to-date revenue is already 88% of last year's total. So the growth story continues for Tesla, even through this storm of uncertainty. And remember, when the interest rate does come down again, this will only accelerate Tesla's already fast growth at that point. And yes, Tesla did talk a little bit about the robot and full self-driving, but nothing new under the sun here. But this will no doubt be a big catalyst in the future. So a lot more good things to come and Tesla is still steering their ship so beautiful, while Ford and GMs are backtracking on their EV promises. And Tesla just added more money to their war chest. And thank you for watching. And until next time, take care out there and be nice.